Third gen, best gen, third gen, best gen, third gen, best gen, third gen, best gen. Bro, how much do you want for your forerunner? Easy. Enough for me to buy another third gen, best gen, third gen, best gen, third gen, best gen, third gen. This is me driving away. Third gen. From 1996 to 2002, Toyota took one look at the Ford Explorer and thought, Oh, America wants explorers? I'll give you something to explore. Explore these nuts. I'm going to give you a thick-walled V6. That will go 300,000 miles. Wheels that poke out way before it's gonna be cool. And a four-wheel drive box that is indestructible. I'm giving you a low range controlled by a foolproof J-shifter and optional electronic locking hubs. And if you want frame rot, guess what? You can have that too. You want build quality? Oh, you got it. And I'm also going to need you to build up the quality of my erection. There's no accident this looks vaguely like a furred exploder. <laughs> what happened was chief designer Masaki Iziko kicked open the conference door of the Haruma office with a thermos full of rage in one hand and the other down his pants. He says, throw out everything about the second gen. Everything. We're starting from scratch. Everything about the third gen is going to be new, every single part. But I want you to make this new generation look just like the old generation. And if Ford isn't pissed yet, I'm going over there and giving Alexander Trotman one of these. And a board member speaks up. Boss, are we going to assemble the new Hilux Surf in the United States? Ha ha, funny, Masaki replied. Masaki then turned his back to the conference table. He played one ball on the lone pachinko machine in the room. He hit the supreme jackpot. Ball bearings spilled everywhere. They rolled across the tile floor, making the only noise in an otherwise silent conference room. The pachinko machine stopped ringing. Lights stopped flashing. And the last ball bearing rolled against one of the sitting board member's shoes. The room was silent for two Olympic seconds. Masaki, with his back still turned to the seated board members, punched his fist through the pachinko machine's glass. Light bulbs, pins, little plastic spinners, and drops of blood fell to the floor. Masaki turned and faced the motionless board members. Real funny. The third gen forerunner, or Hilux Surf everywhere else in the world, was unique among SUVs of the late 90s and early 2000s because it didn't try to be a sports utility vehicle like an Explorer or Chevy Blazer or Dodge Durango. Comfort was not in its lexicon. Oh, some salespeople back in 1996, when this was new, may have tap danced around the showroom saying near truths like refined and good for city and trail. But this is not a comfortable 4x4. And that's a big criticism of the third gen 4 runner, well, and all of them for that matter, is these don't ride very well. And the critics of the Forerunner are right. This isn't an SUV like a Toyota Sequoia. This is a 4x4 truck with a body. The Forerunner and the Tacoma pickup are almost identical. Same engines, same transmissions, rear ends, dashes, seats, switches. The only parts that are different are behind the front headrests. A third gen bounces around, feels top heavy, doesn't corner, and is slow, really slow. Zero to 60 miles an hour. Okay, Motor Week, when they tested this car in 96, claimed it would get to 60 miles an hour in nine and a half seconds, but I cannot get any lower than 10. 12 is really what I get. And here we go, zero to 60, there's 20, 30, 40, 50, come on girl, 
60. You have 183 horsepower and 217 pound-feet of torque. Your top speed, well, I've never tried to test it. 75 miles an hour on the interstate feels like you're going max power on an electric scooter down a crumbling sidewalk. Any moment, you're going to do a Fast and the Furious air ram flipper stunt crash. I have a receiver. What do I tow? Nothing. Toyota claims that the third gen runner had a 5,000 pound towing capacity. I mean, maybe it can do that in emergencies. I have yet to tow a single thing with this. The manual says if you're towing anything over 1,000 pounds, really, you shouldn't have your overdrive on. You need to click the little button, lock it out. Suspension is double wishbone front and a live axle rear. Yes, it does have multi-link, but it's firm. A third gen runner tries to maintain its nine and a half inches of ground clearance all the time. It's also the first Ford runner to have a rack and pinion steering setup. Before it, it all just had boxes. I find it strange that an engine that only revs to five and a half thousand RPM needs double cams, but that's how they made this. Welcome to the car that's always been in the background. The unseen trooper. Well, unseen, right? You see it. But we haven't really talked about it in depth. This is copyrighted music. And this is Susie. She is named after the tank character from the video game Deltarune because she's a tank. I love this thing. I'm gonna be buried in this car. Or is it truck, or is it SUV, or is it four by four? Or is it a warm day? The third generation Forerunner is unique in that it is the last of the four by fours that Toyota ever made where they didn't really think about Americans. These seats are not very wide. This roof, look at that. I'm touching the roof in an SUV. In a medium size or for the 90s and the early 2000s, this was considered a large, large vehicle. Not so much now, but there are times when, when this thing sloshes about, oh, this is, <laughs> this is non-responsive -re steering, but when you get this thing rocking, your head will hit the roof if you bounce around. It's almost like you need a helmet in here. Four runners are fast, with the exception of one, the fourth gen that had the 2UZ V8 in it. All the others had six pots. And anybody you see driving around in four runners going really fast, they're pushing their four runners hard, especially the fifth gens. We reviewed a fifth gen, I was like, wow, that's slow. So I love the guys who, they get the four runners, they jack them up, and uh, shout out to Frank, one of the best mechanics and service guys in the industry. I'm not, I'm not calling you out, Frank. I love your four runner too. He is a third gen too, and uh, his is jacked up and lifted. But he probably drives it conservatively because his four runner is in great shape. But you see people, some people with third gens, who, who they put the replacement dash on it that just says Toyota across the back, get some uh, throwback livery with a wrap on it, and spend all their time... <laughs> that sound. <laughs> That's the sound a forerunner four makes. Don't you go. I'm looking at you. Brakes also not too fantastic, so I'm well aware of people who are trying to pull out because I got little discs on the front and drums in the rear because the wheels are so small because the tires are so fat. And once we started using this as the camera car, even though the ride is terrible, and shout out to Matt Farah, smoking tire, Matt Farah and Zach Clapp, and they agree that four runners ride like junk and they're correct and I agree with them. Four runners don't really ride that great because they're, they're dedicated four by four vehicles. Essentially, they're trucks, they're just Tacomas. So, there's attempts to try to make them ride 
nice. But Toyota doesn't want to move away from having the 4Runner be their premier. It's their Jeep, really. I mean, shout out to the FJ Cruiser. I mean, those are the ones you really want, but uh, anyway. But because the tires, the wheels are so small and the tires are so fat, when we hit Pennsylvania bumpy roads, even though the 4Runner bum, 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 goes over them, it doesn't slam. It never slams because there's so much deflection in the tires that doesn't matter. It also doesn't help that from a modern, stand, uh, from, from modern standpoint, uh, this is a short wheelbase truck. And when you... Now the upside of that is that this thing never porpoises. It never whoop a whoop a whoop a whoop over stuff. It just kind of <laughs> everywhere. I am now at a stoplight and I'm going to shift it into four wheel. Whoops, my turn to go. I'm going to shift it into four wheel high on macadam because that's what the manual tells you to do once a week. It's in the manual. Once a week on a fairly flat road. Now it's curving a little bit, so I'm gonna turn off the four high. But now shift on the fly. Actually, I'm going a little bit too fast for it. Uh, in town, which I will be soon, in town, it's recommended that you shift your transfer case into four high for a couple miles, you know, mile now and again just to keep the oil flowing around in there. So don't be afraid if you have a third gen or really any forerunner or Tacoma for that matter with the J with the with the manual J shifter right down here. Pull it back when you're just driving on a straight road in town. Get that oil flowing around in the gearbox. That way when you do need four high, it's always Nice and ready to go. The, ti the tires that are on the 4Runner are El Tigres. You may be more familiar with their performance version. Uh, the Mucho Macho. Oh, I could have made that. Oh, well. They are budget tires. However, and they're, they're probably like scratching their head because they gave me these tires that are on the 4Runner. But uh, they didn't... Oh, come on, just far enough away. All right, I'm shifting into four-wheel drive just because... I do this sometime just so I can get traction when I pull out because the 4Runner has 410 rear gearing. That's how they came. So even though there's not a whole lot of power, there is a good amount of torque. So yeah, there we go. And off. So there is 15,000 miles on these tires. No problems. Great. Thank you for the LT Grays. They work fine on the 4Runner. They're not making any sort of noise. They look great. They look like they belong on there. And now I get to do more Pennsylvania stuff because it's time for school to let out. And I get to cross four lane highway with multiple people. I have the right of way. Look at these people trying to make left hand turns across four lanes of traffic instead of just turning right and going to the sheets and turning around there. No, they want to just go in the middle of the road and say, I don't want to go to the jug handle and back. I've been making this turn my entire life. Arr, arr, why does it take so long? Just turn right and then turn left. I haven't had a chance to take these tires in the mud yet because this is my pavement princess. The difference between a 4Runner and the previous camera car, the Subaru Forester, is that a Subaru Forester is ready to play all the time, especially with a manual, because that's 50-50 power distribution all the time. So you can slide it, you can do neutral drifts, you can spin in a circle, it's great. 4Runners, on the other hand, are more like mammoths. When you put them into four-wheel drive, like now, it becomes more of a, it just sort of lunges forward. It doesn't want to play. It doesn't want to slide. And probably that's a good thing because I have warnings up here telling me, don't tip this thing over. It's a tall, <laughs> it's a tall car. It's top heavy. I remember the first day I bought this, I still was driving it like a Subaru 
just dive bombing into corners and stuff. And uh, the original tires, not the LT grays, the original tires really cried out in pain. These not so much, but you really shouldn't be doing stuff like that with, uh, oh, do I have to stop school bus? Lights coming on? No, they're just putting their four ways on so they can get themselves turned around. Okay, how you doing? Right now we're driving this to Moyers Car Care in Schuylkill Haven. Just because I'm getting a little bit of shudder, and by a little I mean a lot, uh, shudder on the brake pedal. The, uh, the rotors were changed on this, but uh, that was two years ago. And uh, maybe they were a bad batch, or maybe I was riding the brakes a whole lot. Or maybe it was when I went down to visit... Uh, do it with Dan and I was on a racetrack with this thing and I started trying to race it <laughs> and standing on the brakes pretty hard so maybe that warped my front rotors a little bit and it's time for a new pair so oh yeah since we're going up a hill you get to hear the sound that everybody who thinks they have a fast forerunner makes it's the many derivations of the forerunner v6 here we go foot down Yep. I'm going. I'm going. Nothing. By the way, people who put exhausts on forerunners, not just third gens, but all of them in general, all of them sound like ass. There's no version, there's no combination of catbacks of mufflers, of resonators that make these V6s sound nice. None. Honestly, the Buick 3800 V6 sounds better than this thing. These things just sound like shop vacs running off a 220. Forerunner V6s just sound like fourth graders trying to go Super Saiyan on the playground. Forerunner V6s sound like a professional esports player getting dumped. <laughs> With the bounciness of this ride, the oh shit handles right here, and the driver gets one, the passenger gets one, the rear passengers get one up here, the passenger on that side gets both. I find myself, on the times when we have to do off-road shoots, or when I'm driving down a really ruddy road, I'm bracing myself while I'm driving, I don't hang on to the wheel. This handle, which is only that far away from the wheel, I have a tendency to grab. I wonder if anybody else who has third gen runners just grab this handle right here. I think I'm trying to keep my head from hitting the wi from hitting the passenger window or hitting the uh, uh, little bit here. You know, here's something else. Did forerunners ever not come with sunroofs? Every single third gen I've seen has a sunroof. Was it just? Were they standard or were there slick top versions of these? I know you could get this with a four banger. And honestly, I think the four banger with a manual version of this would be fun. I mean, you're not gonna tow anything. You're not gonna go fast and you're gonna work, you're gonna work that little four cylinder really hard. But I think something about this with a four cylinder, that'd be a lot of fun. If I was a bigger YouTuber, I'd start collecting forerunners like I did back there where I needed four wheel drive to pull out really fast. Sometimes I'm throwing it into four high on dry roads where there's anomalies going on. Like there was this one time I was driving, here's some Philly moments. I was driving down and Waze was telling me to get on the Schuylkill Expressway and I said, no, I'm not taking 76 right in through town. I'm gonna go around it. Give me the blue route, give me 476. No wait, that's 276, 276 goes around. So I'm like, I always take 276, even if it's a bit longer. I don't want to deal with uh, inching my way all the way through there, Vine Street Expressway. I don't want to deal with that. I'll just go around the city, come up from the bottom. Well, I go around on 276, and sure enough, tractor trailer, a bunch of, you know, the Philly happens. So now I'm stopping, I'm, I'm stop and go on 276. So I'm like, fine, I'm getting off this. I'll find my way through. And what was my way to my friend's house? Gerard. Yep, here we go. Let's go down Gerard Avenue with the trolley tracks 
right in the middle of my lane and they were so slippery. The back end of this going left and right, I'm just driving down Girard Avenue in four wheel drive high, just so at least some of these wheels have traction. A forerunner is as practical as a good marriage in the time of Jane Austen. Get that three mule dowry now because when you die at age 36 from blood failure, Bustington Manor is going to end up being brought by the coming sons of West Garbage Port. Third gen forerunner. The official car of dads whose favorite chore is making you do chores. God help you if you ever say you're bored within two area codes of forerunner dad, because he will find you something to do. In the time of legacy nameplates being transformed into cars that carry them with no semblance of the model they were named for, the Acura Integra comes to mind, the used car is king. Because heated washer fluid is great and all, but you don't want to drive a 2023 Ferd that gives off the vibe of a Sears that got hollowed out to make way for a spirit Halloween. You need a car or truck that works. Not something for guys who switch out head units on pre-2000 cars because they need a visual indicator that the volume is going up. You want a third gen forerunner. You just don't know it yet. And that's okay. All necessary things are initially met with resistance. Whether it's a kid trying to find a way to sneak vegetables off his plate, or a grandmother who refuses a wheelchair because she thinks it'll make her die faster. With the third gen forerunner, Toyota built a car that didn't have the raw grass fed American appeal that. Jeeps at the time, I mean, those were the age of the TJ. God, I love TJs. Or the Ford Exploder had. So Toyota needed to convince buyers that the third gen runner was not only on the level of the off-roaders that American loved in the late 90s, but on a pedestal above those offerings. Americans were over minivans. They wanted SUVs. And gas prices were the lowest they've been since the 80s. They wanted sports utility vehicles. They wanted American-made. They wanted to go to the Home Depot, but take the rocky, unpaved roads behind Fitzroy's chicken and brothel. And yet, while you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube, you can always put the cap back on. Toyota may not have been able to change the expectations of what a forerunner was, but they could change the expectations of what it could be. If a Camry is a terminally bland but financially pragmatic machine, the forerunner was every bit as practical, but with an American flair for the excess. And in my case, it's excess fuel consumption. Oh boy, do third-gen runners like to drink for V6s. Anyway, the third-gen runner marked a significant period of redesign, new body shell, and a chassis shared with the Land Cruiser Prado. A larger body, a longer wheelbase, more passenger space, for the time really, more cargo room, for the time really, and that rack and pinion steering coil springs, and all around like a nightcap for the entire bar for the last call. Sure, this generation marked the last generation for the five-speed manual, which wouldn't be offered on any forerunner again, and I don't have that, I have an automatic. If you have a manual transmission, V6, SR5 forerunner, or the limited, in the manual transmission, you have the holy grail of all forerunners right now. Because when Toyota offered the 2UZ V8 in the 4th gen runner, that was after the manuals had gone away. Oh well. Yes, Toyota offered a TRD supercharger kit for the V6 on this, but in a very un-Toyota way, that's dangerous. You could pop your head gaskets with that blower, and I don't understand why they did it. Unless you needed different types of head gaskets or maybe ARP head bolts or something to squeeze that head gasket down, I'm very suspicious of anybody who puts the TRD blower on these things. Oh, and frame rot is real. It's the Northeast. So I paid Bruce's team 
to grind off any bit of rust off of this frame and seal it with POR15 and on top of that, put the uh, POR15 top coat. It took a week to do this to make sure that frame was clean, clean, dry, dry before it all went on and then it cured for a few days indoors. And Bruce told me to tell you, to tell everybody, Bruce Hens Garage is no longer offering this service. He can't tie up one of his lifts for that long, having a car sit up on the air and not get any work done while it cures. But according to Bruce, when it comes to third gen runners, the POR15 is the ultimate solution above fluid film. You do this once, you're good for at least five years. And he has some customers with Toyotas who have gone 10 years with a thick, heavy coat of POR15 and the top coat, but only if you grind off all the rust that's already there. There's a reason people generally hate change, even if it ends up being good for them. For one, change is uncomfortable and unfamiliar. It forces us to break the routine of what we know and live in uncertainty, at least until uncertainty stabilizes. But that requires embracing the unknown. And that's hard for a lot of us. Really hard. To where the only thing harder is finding a way to not be envious of people for whom change is easy. Secondly, we glorify the past so that everything that came before beats everything that is now. Music, movies, cars, even people were better in the echo chamber of the mind, whether that's actually true or not. And for some generations, it was true because their world made sense. And the things that they learned when they were children, before their prefrontal cortex finished forming, when their mind was Play-Doh, and the truths that they learned when they were children in the 1970s fit in and dug themselves deep within the folds of their brain. But then each generation is going to believe that their generation was best generation. But I love the third gen forerunner. Peak of technology, peak of analog. The only thing it can't do is be efficient. 15 miles a gallon no matter what. Some very boastful people said with their forerunners that they got 21 miles per gallon highway, Lord knows how. These things come with 410 rear gearing. This V6 is really turning on the highway. How are you getting 21 miles per gallon? Especially with something as unaerodynamic as this. No turbos, no variable valve timing, no lean burn, no stop start, no low rolling resistance tires. I don't know how they claim come up with that numbers. 15, no matter what. Ah, look at this thing. The prismatic jewel of nostalgia casts a warped light so that we remember San Francisco Rush graphics being photorealistic and Garden State being a good movie instead of a soundtrack with a promotional video attached. The entire movie of Clerks had snappy dialogue, you remember, but it really was just that one scene. Let the past be the past. Forget Caitlin Brie. But not only this, we end up lionizing the past so much that we start to believe it's better than anything that could possibly come along in the future. Which leads us to the third reason change is hard. Future bias. We're mistrustful of new technology, just as we're mistrustful of anything advertised too slickly. When it comes to cars, we stick to the brands we know because even when they give in and start integrating all that new tech, at least it's based in a kernel of something we recognize. But it's a contradiction. I accept the future so long as it comes wrapped in a warm, familiar blanket. I lay in bed, wrapped head to toe in contradictory cocoons of futurism caked in nostalgia. I lie in bed awake way too long, looking at old commercials on my phone for a hint of that 8.30 Friday night warmth with no homework. When someone else is driving, I close my eyes in the car and imagine every turn in my head. I pull the weighted blanket over me, close my eyes and imagine I'm back in a car on a ride home from some place from my youth, and I imagine every turn the car is making, and I picture those familiar roads in my head. And then 
the next memory I would have would be waking up in my own bed with no memory of how I got there. Change is hard because it means letting go of the idea that familiarity is the only gateway to happiness. Which brings us back to the third gen runner. It challenged American standards of reliability and excess in its own day. A presentation that may have been hard to sell in areas where domestic brands ruled for a much lower price. But today, a third gen forerunner has an entirely new value in a post cash for clunkers world. We've seen the memes. $5,000, just get it off my hands. 2023. $20,000, no low ballers, I know what I have. You see, quality used cars have been so scarce since 2009 that to find a genuine example of a 4x4 designed to last is something worth celebrating. And you're starting to see more of them pop up on cars and bids, and bring a trailer. Good cars with decent mileage that fetch a fair penny, but earn it through their operation. I will not sell this forerunner. This one is mine. And I don't really know where all these now low mileage Toyotas are coming from, but I have a theory. With the ongoing rise in remote work after the pandemic, Multi-car families are coming to the conclusion that they don't really need multiple cars anymore, so they sell off one. Many in decent to good condition from having not being driven much between 2020 and now. And suddenly now, in 2023 and soon to be 2024, a new crop of decent used Toyotas are popping up with, with no immediate sign of government intervention to snuff it out last time. Which isn't to say that something similar will never happen again, especially as the federal government continues to incentivize hybrid and EV ownership. But it's too early to proclaim the death of ICE. It just doesn't work in rural places like this. Here, we still have a place for the soft-spoken, all-weather stoicism of Japanese cars built to American attitudes of wide-shouldered pragmatism and adventure. Accepting a forerunner into your life might require change, but while change is a hard thing, it doesn't have to be a bad thing.